and welcome to Afflictions Sugarcoated, a podcast where we share code some of the world's so-called afflictions and rate its plausibility out of a scale of 1 to 5. I'm Minnie Kim, and today we will be sugarcoating TV shows. Okay, so let's get this out of the way quickly, okay? The best TV shows. There's a tie between Sherlock, the BBC version, obviously, and Suits for first place, and there's a tie for The Big Bang Theory, The Good Doctor, The Blacklist, and Friends for the rest, right? Obviously, it's my preference, and I know TV shows like Breaking Bad is claimed to be the best, but I'm underage, unfortunately. Yes, a teenager, so I cannot watch that yet, but as soon as I'm in the correct age to watch both, I'll give the review. I mean, if this podcast even lasts this long. Okay, Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul or something like that. I'm sure it's good. I have been able to watch it. Maybe it'll be on the top list. I've seen some YouTube shorts videos about it. It seems pretty good, so I'll probably probably make it to the top. Yeah. But let's not get into too much of the controversy there because, well, this isn't a <laughs> podcast or controversy. I mean, it is, but not for those things. Yeah, so we'll move on. I could go on and on about TV shows because they do take up a special place in my heart. Like, there's nothing better than finishing off a long day with homework, with a lot of lot of stress, academic stress, whether that be from your friends or whether that be from, I don't know, school or work if you're grown up and go to college or something like that. Yeah, sure. But a long day is a long day, and you always have long days. You always have that onerous and grueling work to do over and over again. But if you finish that off with some snacks and a good episode on a comfy space or like either alone with or with your loved ones, that is just unbelievable. That is one of the things that, one of the joys in life that I'll never be able to let go of. Like if someone said to me, you can only watch TV for one more day. That's, 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 no. I'm not living that life anymore, <laughs> okay? And that and movies, right? Movies, TV shows, I, I think the, both of the same things. I personally prefer TV shows because it's a long, extended thing. Um, I do love movies, though. There are some movies that are just, that are better than TV shows, to be honest. I just think that if you get more emotionally attached to the characters when it ends, like, I'll talk about more of that later. But that feeling is, to me, a very, very grad... It gives me gratification, I guess. Yeah. So, name another better thing to do with your free time. Name a thing... Like, reading books. I I enjoy reading books. This is the next girl, okay? It's one of my favorite things to do. I read books everywhere but that doesn't really beat that feeling when you turn on an episode maybe netflix i mean come on netflix or nothing okay all the other stuff disney plus stuff like that come on don't don't compete with netflix i i I prefer netflix and when that happens when you sit at that sofa and you sit on the couch and you just eat some popcorn stuff like that I mean, that's a good feeling. That warms your soul. I personally think it actually warms my soul. Maybe not. Maybe we'll do. That's a battle to fight another day. So, sure, like, productivity is good, but nothing beats that sensation after you finish an episode. For example, Suits. Oh my god, if you haven't watched Suits, please do. Sherlock, if you haven't watched it. That feeling of suspense is amazing i think god created that for a reason that is just a feeling that you don't know what's going to happen but you can kind of guess but there's a complete twist of events that you never predicted and that realization as soon as that realization hits i think that might be the best feeling in the entire world maybe i'm not big and old enough to realize what's good and what's bad but i mean everyone enjoys tv shows in my opinion. So, yeah, that suspense of the author leaving you hanging. The small talk about what will happen next, who will die, 
we'll go out with who, although those are usually romantic comedies. I'm I'm a fan of romantic comedies, but but sometimes it's kind of cheesy. So I enjoy TV shows again as much as the next girl, and perhaps even more. I just realized that every single thing that I'm sugarcoating usually these days are the things that I enjoy most about life. <laughs> like procrastination, for example, coin flipping. There, I, I take pleasure from those things. I don't know why, but whenever I'm thinking of like a thing to sugarcoat, I just suddenly think of all the things I like. I find the bad things about them because usually the things I like include very, very bad things for some reason. Yeah, there are ramifications I'm just dealing with them in my own way. Maybe enjoying guilt by even more guilt. My guilty conscience. I like that. So, why am I sitting here ranting about how much I like TV shows in a podcast that deals with minor afflictions? So that requires a complicated answer about how I, why I started this in the first place, but I'm not going to get into that. It's like saying, what do you want when I want billions of things. Okay, so the simple answer is that TV shows all have an end. You know who the biggest target audience of TV shows are? People who get immersed easily, people who get too involved, people who subconsciously follow the characters' behaviors, people who get emotionally attached to the show. I mean, the latter two ones don't really apply to me, but I am that person who gets overly immersed in the emotions and plot of a drama or series. That's just me. I can't say that I'm really proud of it. I can't really shame. I'm ash- I can't really say I'm ashamed of it. It's just komsi komsa, right? For the TV shows listed above, it's always such a sad thing when it ends. I remember when Sherlock ended. I mean, obviously, guys, I'm not old enough to watch these TV shows live, so obviously these were all on Netflix when I watched them, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, so, Suits, that was that was a beautiful ending, yet so many tears. I didn't cry, but so many tears in the TV show. Sherlock, I mean, whew, that was, that was also a pretty good ending. I mean... To be honest, I think all of the TV shows that are incredibly famous, incredibly well-known, I don't want to say notorious, I think Friends might be either notorious or famous. Which one is it? That's actually a controversial one. Anyways, they all have a good ending. They all have an ending with an inside joke. For example, Friends Friends was had an ending with an inside joke. Uh, what else? Suits ending was very dramatic, but I still liked it. The Big Bang Theory, also very dramatic, but I absolutely loved it. It, That last song by Sheldon Cooper was Chef's Kiss. And other things. And I don't really consider The Good Doctor as a finished TV show, so I'll just say that the best ending was when Dr. Melendez died. Season 3. I will consider that as the true ending. After that, the I, I think the first three seasons were the best, although it was pretty sad. The lives on TV are cut short, but we assume that the lives would be better, which is incredibly unlikely because to the extent that their lives were pearliest and interesting enough to make it on TV means that bad things will continue happening to them, right? This is an incredibly likely thing like propensity analysis come on like there is not going to be a happy happy ever after for Sherlock Holmes I mean who 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 thinks that I I don't want to call it a comeuppance just fate so on to some characters that I absolutely adore Harvey Specter obviously Sherlock Holmes Sheldon Cooper number five from the Umbrella Academy weirdly enough etc It's really just amazing stuff. To find a synonym for amazing. Astonishing, astounding, surprising, bewildering, stunning, staggering, shocking, startling, stupefying, breathtaking, perplexing, confounding stuff. Fascinating stuff. Marvelous stuff. It is just good, good stuff. 
then again, everything comes to an end. It's too bad every good thing comes to an end sooner than the bad things. I mean, of course, objectively, they come to end in similar time periods, but it just feels that way. And I realized one thing in the world, it doesn't matter what the objective truth is, as long as everyone thinks so. That's the truth we go by. That's the law we abide by. That is the rule and the line we step on. To sugarcoat this, you need to understand that I'm already just setting up the bar to a four. Four out of five because my love for TV shows. I wouldn't have it any other way. I mean, it's like your favorite food It's is pizza. But then pizza is not the most healthy food ever. So you're just gonna, if you had to rate it as a whole, you're obviously gonna give it a four, at least a four, despite its health harms, I guess, in a way. Look, even if we were to bite the bullet of this quote-unquote all good things come to an end phenomenon, the end is basically marking the end to work. It's kind of sadder if I say it like this, but there are actors behind these jobs. These people earn paychecks by pretending to be a character. It's all a fictitious wonder, and I I love this. I love this. Don't get me wrong. I absolutely love actors. I'll refrain from talking about them because it's kind of controversial, but I admire their job of entertaining people. And I think it's just because it's a fictitious wonder doesn't mean that we don't have to get immersed in the business, right? Just because you have a certain standard to not get too involved with someone else's work or someone else's business you get interested, you get curious, you inquire, and that's the beauty of the human brain, I think. The beauty of the human brain is that it can never, ever truly be individual. You try to find that individual sense of who you are, your identity, but your identity is never an identity without your parents, without your siblings, without your loved ones. Without them, your identity is nothing, so... I never really understood the phrase, mind your own business, to the extent that you say you are familiar enough to a person to say mind your own business means that it is their business, means that they should care. And most actors take their jobs very seriously. Some take it way too seriously that fatal things happen. Absolutely devastating things happen because actors get too immersed in their characters. And there were deaths because of this specific situation or circumstance. In the end, it's a TV show. It's fictitious. It's a funny collection of lives that never have and never will exist. It might be similar. It might be based on a true story. But it will never completely emulate that person's life. It will never completely imitate or picture or frame that person's life perfectly because their life is just way too boring for a wide audience to pay attention to. If you put it that way, it makes you snap back into reality. You know what? Let's not snap back into reality. Let's enjoy the characters' lives without a blemish. The little imperfections that they have, the weird little habits, the inside jokes, and the flawless articulation of scripted words, I like it that way. That way, Sherlock Holmes isn't Benedict Cumberbatch. He's a genius detective with with his good old friend John Watson. Maybe I'll continue fooling myself until one day it becomes boring, But until then, I'm fine with the little laugh and the joyous guilt that seeps out of watching a good series. And to all the nerds and people who claim that they don't watch TV out there, you know you like it. And this thing that I'm doing of not giving a five to anything because nothing is perfect? Well, Benedict Cumberbatch's portrayal of Sherlock was perfect. I give the sugar coating of TV shows a five. This podcast was written and produced by me, Minnie Kim, and if you have any comments or reviews, please feel free to write any and all thoughts on your podcast reviews. If you would like to suggest an affliction for me to share code, please email me via afflictionsharecoded at gmail.com. It's basically the podcast name and at gmail.com. 
So what's your favorite TV show? And before you say that something is the best, I suggest you watch Suits or Sherlock if you haven't already. Maybe just maybe that'll change your mind. Okay. Have a good one.